My name is Torge Petersen. In this video, I will show you how to manage best the text inside a display application of a vector-based screen editor related hardware. I will show how text is used in general, how the text can be exported into a text file, what data points uh, each text component inside an exported text file provides, show the structure of this exported text file so that you are able to modify, change or add text for translation before you import the text back to your application. In this video, I use the EIC example application, which is available in the Plus One Update Center. This application provides already some text elements. I don't need to develop a new application and you are able to recreate or test on your own if you want to. I opened the screen editor of um, the EIC application and take a look to the text elements. Text inside display editor is handled in general via text component stored somewhere in the project library. Also the text list components, which are made up of individual text components, like in this ESC example where the text is stored somewhere in the related folder. It is up to the developer where and how to store the text. You can also store all text in one folder. It's up to you. So like in this ESC example where the text components are stored in different locations, each text element provides some data. I select the text component called string field in this ESC example so um, to show you some of the properties which are used to manage text in the display application and which are used inside the exported text file. By the way, the text component string field is a text definition and assigned to multiple text elements in this uh, example, but all the following mentioned properties and data points are available for any single text element. Starting with the EID, this is a unique identification number specific for this text element. For the text component string um, field, it is ID number 24. Next data point is the, or the description. So in addition to the um, ID, a unique name for this text element. For my selected text element in this example, it is string field. Another data point is the content of the text element. This could be empty, text only, or text in combination with the value format. The content of the text component string field contains a value format only. So it's um, percentage $1. That's it, more or less, for each text component specifically. The only missing data point is the language. As you might already know, that does each text element provide translation data points, so a possibility to manage text in different languages. A plus one display application starts with one language called English by default. By a right click, you can add more languages to your project. These languages will be shown for each text element under translations. After I showed an overview of the text element properties or data points, which are stored in the exported text file, we will take a look to the exported file itself. Right click on screen library and select export text data to export the text file in CSV format. It is not recommended to use Excel to open, modify and save this file afterwards because Excel seems to strip information from file and guide report in valid format after saving CSV with Excel. It is recommended to use another tool like Notepad. I opened the exported text and data file from the EIC example application in Notepad++ and this is how it looks like. A couple of rows uh, filled with data points, comma separated and some are listed in quotation mark. Let's start with the first row. First row, number of languages. So the number of languages is two because the example does contain two languages. Second row, IDs of the languages. Any language is identified with a unique number. In this example, the IDs are one and two. One for the first translation group called English and two for the second translation group called language. I will show later that it can differ and does not need to be in complete order. Third row, names of languages English and language. 
and um, fourth row code pages. Code page is a historical remnant yeah, from older display hardware which did not support Unicode and the code page number identified the non-Latin languages. Like it is shown here, I took an older display, a DP620, and via languages there was the possibility to add code pages identified with a unique number so that guide was able to support these languages. For newer display, it is not needed anymore, but the code page number is still stored in the text file filled with a default uh, zero. Fifth row and the following shows the text component data points. In my example, starting with the ID 24 of the text component follow, uh, followed by the the already mentioned data points and quotation mark. Starting with the description of this text element, in my example, it is called string field. And after this, the data points content and code page are shown for each language, comma separated and embedded in quotation mark. In my example, where I have two languages, it starts with the first language group called English, the content, so the format, percent one dollar. In this example, it is only the format for a signal input and the code page with the default zero. Followed with the data points of the second language group called language. The content, which is in my example empty, and the default code page with the default zero. I will add another language group to show you the changes and influence on this text file. First, add another language group inside the screen library. I call it German. Right-click and export the text file, and this is how it looks like. Compared to the previous or original uh, text file with two language uh, groups, you can see the following differences. The number of languages changed from two to three. The ID of the new added German language group is listed as well, which is in this case number three. The name of the language group, of course, and the code page, which is in this example for newer display always zero and, as I already said, not used. In the fifth row and the following, you can see more data points. So the unchanged, um, unchanged data points of the two existing language groups, English and language, and the data points of the new added language group, German. In this stage, I can show you how the text file can be modified and translated text can be added outside guide. To do so, I will add the German text for the first text element ID 24 inside the data point for the language group German, which is this one here, and I will name it string felt. Save the file. Once again, I'm using Notepad++ and be careful if you use Excel, which use additional information and could end up in an unusable format for guide. Back inside the screen editor, I will import the modified text file. It shows that it has been imported successfully and the text element with the ID 24 shows the added translated German text. That's how you can use the exported text file to translate your text outside guide. Use the tool or database you feel comfortable with. But there are also some points you need to consider using exported text file. If you share the exported text file to use this file in other projects, you first have to prepare the project with a number of language groups. So the following data points inside the text file should match with the project where it will be imported to. The number of languages, so if the text file contains three languages, for example, the project where this file is going to be imported to should include three language groups as well. If not, this file cannot be imported. The ID of languages and the names of the languages. So it is mandatory to follow the correct order of the language group. This does include the names and the IDs specifically. If you create or add language groups inside the screen library, it will add an ID in ascending order. This assigned ID will be used for this language group. If this language group will be deleted, the ID will be deleted as well. For example, I create five language groups with the IDs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This, this is also how it is listed inside the text file when I export it. I delete the language group with 
the ID 3, since it was a wrong language, for example, and add a new language group. So after this change, still the same number of language groups is used, and this number is also listed inside the text file. But the language IDs are listed differently as 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. So the ID 3 is gone and or is deleted, and ID 6 has been added. This needs to be known if you deal with text files and share it with other projects. Now I will show the use case where the recently modified text file with the language IDs 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6 should be used in another project. First, I go inside the, um, the new project and create the same number of language groups like it is listed in the text file. So six language groups. I import the text file and got an error message. When I open both text files and compare them, I can see the difference. The ID of languages in the second row, the order of the IDs must match. So, so now you have two possibilities. You change the ID inside the project, so you have the same order like in the text file. So delete the ID 3 and add another language group to, to get the ID 6. Or what I recommend, you copy the ID of languages from your new project to the text file you want to import so that this will match. Please consider to use the same number of languages, otherwise the file cannot be imported. So I copied the language IDs from my new project to the exported original text file. Now the IDs matches and I'm able to import the translated text file in my new project. I hope that you found this video useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum. Check out other videos on our YouTube channel or contact the Plus One Help Desk. Thank you for your attention.